Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michaela, and today we're going to be talking about the books I read in May. So May was a good month, but I thought for some reason I read more books than I did. With Tears of the Kingdom coming out May 12th, I was like addicted. That's all I played. That's all I did. I tried to read, but then I was like, I want to play Zelda right now, so that's what I did. And while it looks like I did read a lot of books, these are the books I kind of read before the game came out. And <laughs> I don't know, I was just more like shocked. Normally I read a little bit more each month, read more than I did this month, but either way, it was still a good month. And I wanted to apologize if you hear my dog Scooby whining, he's in his kennel and he's just unhappy about it, but he needs to be in there right now or he'll just be doing anything and everything so I wrote down all the books I read in May so if you see me looking down that's what I am doing so first up I finished The Moth Keeper by K. O'Neill which is a little graphic novel and it was super cute really loved it it's about like the title a moth keeper who has to go at night to bring the moths these special moths to their tree to make sure it stays alive I don't remember a whole lot about it as I read this, I think the very beginning of May, but it does talk about being lonely and not having friends because being the moth keeper, you are having to do this by yourself and there's no one else to be there for you because you have to take care of the moths and it's such a trivial task that not many people do it, but it was beautiful. I. I don't know, I read through it really fast because I really enjoyed it. If I remember correctly, I think I got a 4, 4.5 out of stars, but it was such a good book. And I think this author is the same one who wrote the Tea Society, or the Tea Dragon Society, I can't remember, but I'll put it down in the video when I'll look it up because I can't remember the name, but it was still a phenomenal read. Next up, I finished The Lost Hair by Tui T. Sutherland, which is... Which I read the graphic novel version, not the um, actual book. It, so this is about Tsunami and she's the lost heir of the water dragons. And she's very hell-bent on wanting to find her family, which I don't blame her because they were ta all the dragonettes were taken by birth, taken at birth. And so she makes it to the water kingdom and she realizes it's not all it's cracked up to be with her mother and all the things and that... Her mother is very, <laughs> I don't know what the correct word it is, is very, she's very protective of her children, which is not the word I'm looking for, but it was a good read still. I feel like the reading the um, graphic novels is just a tad bit easier for me to read, like understand what's happening, because sometimes I'll be reading the books and I'm like, wait, I feel very confused, and just having that visual was so nice, and I think I gave the a four star read. It was good. I'm going to continue reading the series, hopefully in graphic novel version, because I really did enjoy what I read when I was like middle school, which now I outgrew that, but I still like it just because for one it's about dragons. Next up, I finished Kids of the District by Nikki Harris, which is free on Kindle Unlimited, which is phenomenal. I think there's six, seven books, but I only read five out of the six or seven. It's a mafia romance and it's about the different the butcher boys and they're all brothers and they grew up mafia but their significant other didn't which is <laughs> it's so good I love this series like about all the different brothers like I was just like giggling the whole time being all giddy it was so good so first up I finished Our Thing which is a grumpy ex sunshine which is about Max and Cassidy <laughs> I love them I love them so much so, Max is a grump, obviously, and Cassidy is a ballerina, and she loves being a ballerina, but she's always had the hots for Max, but Max has always just kind of avoided her just because he didn't want to bring her into this life, but you know how things go. They fall in love. Things get a little spicy. It was phenomenally done. What was that word, guys? <laughs> but it was really well done. I really enjoyed the series. You can read all these books as standalones, which is great. It just kind of depends which butcher boy you want to start with. <laughs> Next up, I feel 
finish. I think you pronounce it Cosa Nostra. I'm going to be honest. I'll probably butcher that and everybody's going to be screaming at me. Which, this is still a continuation of Max and Cassidy, which I really enjoy because sometimes, you know, authors will just kind of finish out the book with that character and then they won't continue, which is perfectly okay, but I really loved Max and Cassidy. And this is just continuing them about their romance, you know, really learning to love each other and themselves and going through all these dark times. And like I said, I love these two. I gave them both like a four and a half star read because they were just really easy to read, really fun. I really fell in love with the characters. So good. Next, I finished Her Way, which is a second chance romance. And this is between Bronson and Shoshana. And Bronson has is a little crazy out of the Butcher Boys. Like, something happened to him mentally. So he's different and more dangerous in a way with the compared to the other Butcher Boys. And Shoshana is his love. They were together when they were teenagers and they were super in love with each other. But something happened, which I won't spoil, of course. But they obviously drift apart and Shoshana moves away. She becomes a doctor. She's seen somebody else. Bronson ends up at her hospital with a bullet wound. And then it just starts this romance. <laughs> Bronson is hilarious. I love it. Like, I would say this is maybe out of all the ones I read, not necessarily the least favorite, but I don't know. I, I don't know what I was expecting, but it was still a really cute read. I, not cute, I won't say cute, but it was a good read, and I gave this a four out of five star read. So these, what I'm fixing to say, the next two books are about the same butcher boy, Clay Butcher and Fawn, and these are my favorite out of all the books I've read of the Kids of the District, okay? I just have to say that. So, it's His Pretty Little Burden, which is a dark mafia age gap romance. Oh, Clay Butcher has my life. I love Clay. Oh, so freaking good. Clay is the older brother, and he is to be the mayor of the city of the district, and it was... I'm sorry, I don't even know what to say right now, because, like, what I think of these two, uh, uh, I, like, I actually reread these two books because I really enjoyed the series. So, Fawn comes, shows up at the, his house, at Clay's house, because she's pregnant, and she's looking to find her father because she's only 18, and I think he's, like, 30-something. So, please be mindful of the age gap and trigger warnings if that is not something um, you're interested in, but most importantly, check the trigger warnings before you do read. Check the trigger warnings with all these books, actually. But, as I was saying, she's pregnant, shows up at his house, she was in foster care, wants to find her dad just to see if she wants a child, give him a better life. But Clay is, like, enraptured with her. So, he keep he doesn't keep her, but he's basically keeping her there because... There's something going on with Fawn's father, but since she is carrying his child, carrying, because since she's like technically mafia ro royalty in a way, she, <laughs> I'm sorry, this makes no sense, and I'm trying to think of words, but it's just so exciting when I think about this book. But I'm just going to leave it there on that note, because I, I probably confused all of y'all, but if you're into mafia age gap, I would say this is for you. And then his is pretty, the next one is His Pretty Little Queen, which is obviously about Clay and Fawn, like I said earlier. And this is such a growth for Fawn, like compared to her in His Pretty Little Burden, she literally becomes a queen in a way. Like she learns to love herself, learns to grow as a person. So good. And y'all need to read it. And the last book I read in the month of May was Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. And I actually re read this book either early this year or late last year. And I loved it, but I didn't remember anything of it because I wanted to continue the series. When I finally decided to continue the series, I didn't remember any of it. <laughs> and I was like, gosh darn it. So I reread it, loved it. So it's about Spencer and she wants to become a fighter to fight the crow, which is like their aliens 
that are like attacking the city and but her father is considered a coward because he like abandoned a mission which you're not supposed to do when you're a fighter well she goes on this she, she goes to flight school she goes to everything and everybody keeps pushing her away beating her down because she is considered the father the daughter of a coward but she doesn't let that hold her back and she becomes a wing leader not wing leader but she becomes a fighter and it's a truly amazing growth story and currently i'm reading star sight which is the second book in the series and it's phenomenal but uh it was such a good month i gave that five out of five stars and uh, it's chef's kiss it was so good but that was my main wrap up and i hope y'all enjoyed so please let me know down in the comments what books you read in the month of May and what was your favorite, least favorite books I should read. I would be highly interested in listening. So thank y'all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye!